but we can shift from, from the kidney now to the liver. So albumin would be mostly a marker of liver health and function. Okay. I mean, anything you want to see specifically, I can, I can pull up. So, so wait, so this is good news. So albumin declines during aging. You've got it going in the right direction. Um, pretty close to optimal. That's like what? Four point, well, 4.5 ish current values. Roughly around there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, And you've got that, yeah, 4.5 to 8, I think. So yeah, right now, so yeah, you've moved this in the right direction. I mean, that's good. That's great news. So albumin is probably the most underrated biomarker, at least my perspective. So I've mentioned this in other places, but when you think about the concentration of albumin, you see it on the y-axis, it's in grams per deciliter, right? So your value of 4.5 grams is 4,500 milligrams per deciliter. So most people are hot on glucose, or lipoproteins, even the best glucose, 80 milligrams per deciliter. So now you've got albumin, 4,500 milligrams per deciliter versus glucose, 80 milligrams per deciliter. Albumin just based on concentration is six and a half times higher based on concentration in blood. So, okay, total cholesterol, 200 milligrams per deciliter versus, uh, sorry, I said 4,500 versus 80. That's 60 t 65 times higher, right? If I'm doing, if my math is math, if I'm mathing correctly. <laughs> don't look at me. I, I don't do math in my head anymore. <laughs> yeah, I, I got to, I, I may be off by a factor of 10. Let me just, yeah, it's 60 fold higher. Same thing, same thing for uh, total cholesterol, 200 milligrams per deciliter versus 4,500 milligrams per deciliter. So albumin is more concentrated than both of those. Now, where it gets tricky in that, in that, uh, interpretation is that albumin is a big protein, right? So you have to factor in its molecular weight. And when you do that, um, it's basically a big tree floating in the forest. And obviously there's more glucose and lipoproteins in blood, but it's a giant tree floating around that most people don't think anything about. So uh, keeping it relatively high and avoiding that age-related decline, top tier in my eyes. We've got some bad ones. My bilirubin is supposed to be stable with aging, but it looks like it's on the decline. Yeah, so that can go in two two ways, right? So to interpret it in two ways. One is that lower levels are found in youth and they increase during aging. Uh, and, and centenarians actually have relatively higher levels of bilirubin. Like, you know, we're talking double where your levels are. And um, so then the question is, do you want to have them higher or lower, lower knowing that centenarians have higher levels? But bilirubin can act as an antioxidant. So... I think in centenarians, it's more of a compensatory mechanism where, um, you know, their antioxidant defense enzymes may not be good. So they've got to increase bilirubin levels by degrading red blood cells and degrading, degrading hemoglobin. So it, I'd say lower is better and keeping it low indefinitely is better and avoiding the age-related increase. So this is good news that it's moved in the right direction. Yeah, I was going to say the fact that I'm, you know, decreasing, at least I'm heading into my my optimal and within the reference ranges because I was way outside of the reference range previously. Yeah, that suggests you had some oxidative stress going on. That that would be my interpretation, some oxidative stress going on with the very high bilirubins. What was triggering it, though? I mean, that's the billion dollar question. Yeah. And, and then what have you done to reduce it? Right. Also, billion dollar question. Again, I don't think that was one I was targeting specifically. Hmm. Oh, the, the things that you're seeing here are side effects from other things that I was targeting. Is there a way to go back and see, like, because you can see that there's a cut point, right? Like where it like was right there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whatever you did there, it shifted the balance. Yeah. And I wish I could tell you exactly when that was. I guess I can go back to the raw data and take a look. Yeah. Um, so we're looking for. Oh, gosh. Well, it looks like it's around 2021. So, Bill Rubin. Uh, it's probably right in front of my face. I oh, think there you go, Billy Rubin. Um, I'm sorry, I got. I have to zoom out just so I can see more of the uh, more of the ranges here. So let me get into 2021. So 2020, yeah, two. 0.9, yeah. So it was probably right around between 
no, it's 20, yeah, 2020. So it looks like I was in the twos and the 1.7 in 2020. And then around November of 2020, I dropped down to 0 0.9. And then it looks like I consistently stayed lower. Were there supplements or HBOT or red light, some therapy or something that you did that started in 2021? Again, I've got the data. It would be it would be tabs that I would have to go drill down into and, and really yeah. go investigate. Not now. If you want to do that, right? That <laughs> right. Would part, right. That part, would that would take us forever. I don't yeah. think people have the patience for that. Part part three and part four, if you want, if you, <laughs> if you feel like digging into your own data. You know. Yeah. So again, I mean, this is really the first time I'm seeing these graphs right right now with you. I was working on the generation of them all up until this point. So uh, this is all new to me as it is you know, as my data is to you, we're looking at it. So nice. All right. So let's go back to liver. Let's uh, like AST, ALT and GGT, if you have it. Okay. So here's uh, AST, ALP. Which one would you like to look at first? Oh, AST, ALT. Um, we'll, yeah. we'll check out AL, ALP too. Ah, so you have GGT the way. Do you have A ALT? If you scroll up a little bit, is that one of the plots? Uh, it, no. it is on here. It's just probably off the screen. So let me... Uh, Minimize here again. ALT, yeah, ALT is right there. Oh, there yeah, right there. All right, so yeah, moving, moving, <laughs> moving in the right direction. Uh, values in the high teens, low twenties, associated with lowest all-cause mortality risk. I mean, here too, data moving in the right direction. So, um, I, 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 the biggest question is, what did you do? You know? <laughs> yeah, and I wish I had like done that research that I could tell you on this pod. So. Yeah. But I, I you know, couldn't tell you right now. All right. Good news nonetheless. All right. So AST, I'm guessing we'll see a similar trend for AST. There we go. AST. All right. Same same direction. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wait. So still a bit high, though. Most most recent tests are in the 30s, right? High 30s, yeah. 35. Yeah. We got to get that low. I'm like way out of the reference range here for most of these. So I'm now in the reference range and I'm getting back into my very little, uh, very narrow optimal range. Yeah, uh, yeah. Most recent tests are still re relatively high, though. Yeah. So there is at least one paper where GGT was compared against AST and ALT for uh, liver disease-related mortality, and GGT was like the highest GGT levels. The highest ten percent GGT was associated with an eight-fold higher risk of death from liver disease mortality, whereas the highest AST and ALT was like a four-fold higher risk. So that suggests that GGT, when it's high, is a better marker of liver disease mortality risk. So it, in your case, le well, less than 12 is associated with lowest risk, uh, all-cause mortality risk, very large study, 16 million people. So your GGT data is fantastic. I mean, even where you started, 12.75, that trend. I mean, you have a few data points above that, but yeah. lo lower is better for GGT. So, you know, it suggests that... Um, your liver health is good, but something's triggering your AST to be high. It could be supplements. I, I don't know what, you know, is the liver, you know, is, is, uh, detox, you know, phase right. two detoxification. So it could be that something is triggering that and causing some liver damage. But the good news is that GGT is low, which could be a better marker. Hmm. More recently, I've been experimenting a little with Tudka. So that might be helping some of these values or, as I continue, it might help with some of these values. Yeah, I don't know enough about it. I, I think it's involved with like chole, cholestasis. So people who have cholesterol buildup in the liver and then liver dysfunction. But I don't know, maybe it's a different uh, bile acid that I'm thinking of that you can take as a supplement. I, I'm going to have to look into Tudka, T-U-D-C-A, mm -hmm. Toro Uso Deoxycholic Acid. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, man. I had no I idea do. what it's good for. What I do. <laughs> All right. so, you must be a doctor or something. All right. So ALP, ALP is moving in the wrong direction. Um, I don't know that it increases during aging because the studies that I've, I've come across, it's it's variable where it's generally flat, um, but there aren't very large epidemiological studies like for a lot of the other biomarkers to make a an accurate assessment if it increases during aging or not. But all-cause mortality risk above 48, it is associated with higher risk. So, I mean, you're just outside that. It's not too far away from optimal. Um, and moving 
well, but moving in the wrong direction. Um, yeah. but you had very low levels. I mean, that's just amazing. I, I don't think I've seen AOP levels as low as 30, 32. Hmm. So again, I would be curious to see what, you know, what happened again in this time frame where things were low and then they went high, then they went low and Oh, now yeah. they're back high. And then the, that split, that, I don't know if this split is as dramatic because I can't see the, the dates as well on the bottom. Yeah, they're too bunched up. Yeah, but is is that split where, you know, granted, in this case, it's a few data points that were lower and then a lot more that are variable. Is that 2020 versus 2021 again? Yeah, we got zero showing here and ones up at the top. So uh, this would be right at the end of 2020 and all through 2021. But And then, then... but then they increase, you get them decreasing for a lot of tests, and then they're increasing again. Back in 2023, 2024, they went high again, and now we're coming back down again for 2025. So, yeah, I'm at a loss to account for why that is. Yeah. I mean, I, that's a big part of what I do is trying to figure out what moves what to try to, you know, um, that's the biggest challenge without tracking, without tracking, you know, um, I mean, that's something we could look into, right? Which is like, Do you have variability in your supplements? Like you'll take a list of supplements, Not you know, typically. Yeah. No, the biggest variability that's in my life is whether I'm running or training for a marathon or not. Hmm. But the supplements in terms of the amounts stable from test to test. Generally, yeah. Interesting. So, so, so you think some of this is related to marathon training volume? Oh, I have no clue. I'm just I'm just grasping at straws at this point because that's just one major factor that I know that changes a lot. To, to think, to address that, uh, you've been tracking, I mean, how long have you, you've been wearing Whoop? Oh, yeah, for, um, gosh, probably, I'm thinking not quite 10 years, maybe. Wow. So, I don't know if it's been that long, maybe so if eight you, years. so a long time, which could correlate, we could correlate uh, the average daily heart rate, which is in the export. And we could see, you know, basically, so you have, when you did each of these tests. So we could take the average daily heart rate in between, you know, so say day one, day 50. Now we have 50 days average daily heart rate in between tests. That lines up with the latter test. So each test would have, would have an average daily heart rate. And then we could see, is, is average daily heart rate, which biomarkers is average daily heart rate associated with going in the wrong direction for biomarkers and right direction? In other words, Higher training volumes may positively impact some biomarkers, but not others. And then we get to the bigger question, and I'm not trying to modify your training training volume, but it could suggest an optimal training volume to try to get more biomarkers moving in the right direction versus wrong. So a big light bulb just came on for my in my brain, because um, as I'm looking at my own data, trying to figure out like what was my life doing at that time. Um, so prior to 2020, um, yeah, this might make some sense. I was uh, still taking care of my parents, so I was still forced to you know eat a lot of their food. I was not eating my own food, like the grass fed meats, um, you know, just. cleaner, which, you know, shouldn't really account for these things going up, but I also became, became more intentional with my supplementation. So, um, I'm thinking that possibly it's when I did begin, uh, my full court press on supplementation. So 2020 versus 2021 for that. Yeah. But then Yeah. that wouldn't, that wouldn't explain the increase from, you know, 2022 up. Like you see, it's, it's pretty low for like 10 tests. And then there is a trend for it to go for the most recent, say 15 tests, it's like it would go up. Um, Yeah, so there was a lot of experimentation with my supplements throughout that that time. So So that's, it's more most likely a supplement that was causing the changes. yeah, so that too, like if, if you, if we took the average supplement intake, or even, you know, if this, if you have a core list of supplements that doesn't change test to test, and you know only which supplements that you've added in or taken out for a period, 
And then, you know, having that lined up for every test, I know it's a lot of work. It's probably something you don't want to do, but that might get closer to what might be impacting what. Um, Additionally, I was also working on my hormones at that point. So I was trying to get my thyroid uh, dialed in. So there was a lot of thyroid medication changes throughout that time. So, I mean, there's confounding variables upon confounding variables here.